The year is 1943, and the city of Chicago is in a state of transformation. Local industries shift to support the war effort, labor strikes disrupt daily life, and aside from the Blackhawks winning the Stanley Cup, it's proven to be a challenging year. Even so, Uno's founder, Ike Sewell, and pizza chef Rudy Malanti were developing a product that would change American culture forever, the Chicago deep dish pizza. And as it turns out, Italian sausage was the key ingredient. Working in a Chicago pizza kitchen in the 1940s would have been quite different from what we see in modern pizzerias. And the concept of deep dish pizza was still in its early phases of development. Options were limited, but the quality was paramount as most businesses were family owned with ingredients being locally sourced and prepared from scratch. In other words, there was a strong sense of community around pizza. Fast food culture had not yet taken hold. Let's start from salt, generous amount, regular black pepper, sweet pepper, Italian dill, that's got so much flavor, Parmesan cheese, generous amount, and also some chili flakes. The key element of this dish, the dough, goes back way further than any deep dish recipe that became notable in Chicago. In fact, the earliest record of pizza dates back to 600 BC in the form of flatbread that would be topped with herbs and vegetables, and it was found across several different cultures. However, around the year 1700 in Naples, a recipe was cultivated for what they call poor man's food, and we call pizza. The dish was a hit and enjoyed by peasants and later royalty alike. Hence, by the year 1900, America saw its first pizzeria in the form of a Manhattan street vendor. From there, masses of Italian immigrants brought their food to the Midwest, where in Chicago, it became a very popular treat, and it was about to become Americanized. Pizza caught on in Chicago the same way that it did back on the old continent. It was a food cherished by all walks of life and across cultures. In fact, the city's diverse population and food culture allowed pizza to evolve and adapt to local tastes. The city's residents embraced these various pizza styles and they also contributed. For example, Chicago-style pizza often features a generous amount of sausage as a topping. This influence likely comes from the city's strong Eastern European heritage, particularly the Polish and German communities, which have a rich tradition of sausage making. The abundance of cheese in Chicago-style pizza was influenced by the dairy-rich traditions of Wisconsin, a neighboring state known for its cheese production. In other words, Chicago's multicultural makeup has allowed for the incorporation of a wide range of ingredients and toppings into pizza, while traditional Italian ingredients like tomatoes and mozzarella are staples. You'll also find toppings like jalapenos and various meats influenced by other culinary traditions. Let's leave it for proving for another like 20 minutes or so, and let's prepare the tomato paste. It only took a few decades for Chicago deep dish pizza to become mainstream beyond the local population. This happened much in part by popular media. The dish was featured in movies like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, as well as the Blues Brothers, on TV, viewers across the nation saw Chicago deep dish pizza on The Simpsons, Parks and Recreation, or basically every travel show that visited the city. Simply put, authors across many forms of media rely on deep dish pizza as a way to establish their stories as taking place in Chicago. It's amazing how a family-owned pizzeria on Ohio and Wabash revolutionized an Italian dish that had existed for centuries. Business owner Ike Sewell went on to have a rewarding career, living until the year 1990 when he passed away at Northwestern Memorial Hospital after a long fight with leukemia. When it comes to that iconic chef Rudy, well, his story is rather unclear. However, it is known that his son Lou 
went on to found a chain of celebrated Chicago-style pizza restaurants that operate to this very day. When I was in college, I used to eat one of these about once a week. Um, I could almost eat the whole thing myself. Uno's oh my deep gosh. dish pizza is very, very filling. I'm a little bit older now. Um, and I'm curious to try the 1943 version. I've gotta say the more modern version, it looks a little prettier than this. However, the smell checks out entirely. And I think in the past, food was uh, decorative, but maybe not to the same extent. So, you wanna serve me a piece? Yes. If you guys haven't noticed, Kasha is a European. So this, as far as I understand to Europeans, is a kind of perversion of pizza. In okay. Italy, they, yeah, in Italy, they put just a, some herbs and a um, little bit of ingredients on it. So this is really over the top, but that's how us Americans do it. Let's try a 1943 recipe. I like how the steam is coming off of it. It's pretty tasty. Wow. I'm surprised, it's very tasty. And I think what makes it so good in these old recipes is that they kept to the basics. You may have noticed that the ingredients were very, very straightforward. There was no additive here so that the pizzeria could make a huge quantity for cheaper. It was just straight, high quality ingredients and, um, and an amazing hybrid of Italian and American culture. But since it's 1943, I guess I'm excused from doing the dishes. Thank you.